Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to our next webinar. Now, the reason I've got the mask on is, of course, 2020, but today we're talking about breathing through a filter. So I just thought, yeah, party gag. But I'll take the mask off because we all know they're annoying. Okay, so welcome back. This is um, number nine of our filtration webinar series. I'm Paul Marley. I'm the Technical Training Manager from HIDAC in Australia. I'm going to go straight into the presentation and I'll introduce a few things once I'm there. Okay, so this is the, the ninth episode. Thank you for joining us. So the All Filtration Webinar Series, we are up to episode number nine, Filter Breathers. So this is the last of the um, filter product discussions where, where we can learn more about the products and the options available to us. We've got a poll and the poll question will be published now. So just interested in your feedback here. So the question for today is, have you seen a system where the system cleanliness level has been compromised by an improperly applied filter breather? Yes or no? The poll tab is there. Please go in there and, and answer the poll. And we've also got a questions tab. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask us, please put the question in there and we can address that then at the end of the webinar. Okay, so that's the poll, that's the introduction. So the discussion is filter breathers. So part one, what are filter breathers? This is basically an air filter that's used in a fluid application. And I just, you know, for clarity, I'd like to describe that as well. But efficient filter breathers are required for effective contamination control. So we're talking about having usually what is a non-pressurized tank of fluid, and to complement the liquid or fluid filtration, we should have air filters as well. So these are the air filters that support the hydraulic and lubrication systems. The schematic symbol is purely the diamond with the filter media shown there as a strainer. And uh, it's often drawn with a cap over the top or sometimes it's just drawn as a cap but um, it's pretty straightforward. Another way of drawing this is instead of the little dome on the top, you can have an open triangle pointing upwards and that symbolizes air. So it's an air filter. So they're, they're an interesting thing. And um, in many ways, one of the most important filters in our system. Very often, little attention is paid to these filters and the results of that could be disastrous. So they're often a mass produced item and selected purely on price. But being one of the most important filters in the system, sometimes we're undervaluing how important they are. So I'd just like to quickly describe what they look like. We've got a sample one here. So, so this is then the construction of it. Um, you can see that we've got air will be passing through a breathing element and then into the top of the tank. So these things are mounted in the top of the tank. So essentially, let me just sh stop sharing for a moment. We've got uh, an example of one of these breathers here. So this particular type, this is mounted to the tank with the thread, seal with an O-ring, which isn't here. So that's a, that's a seal on there. And this one has a replaceable element. So you can replace that air filter, very similar to replacing the air filter in your car. Okay, so replaceable element on there, sealed with a nice soft um, silicon seal on there. So it seals top and bottom, all the air will pass through the element. And that's how they work. They don't always have a replaceable element, but that one does. Okay, I'm just going to go back to my presentation. Okay, so that's the construction of them. A little more on the construction shortly. Okay, so essentially what's going to happen is with a fluid system, the fluid level will change. In a hydraulic system, the fluid level will change with the movement of the cylinder rods. So essentially the volume of the cylinder rods is the differential area each side of the cylinder. And as cylinders extend, we're going to use more fluid. And then as a consequence, the fluid level in the hydraulic tank will drop. And um, that's basically when air exchange needs to happen. So otherwise you're going to draw a vacuum. So basically you need these things to breathe. Now the danger is, of course, if we just have it open to atmosphere without any filtration, we're going to be pulling in often some very nasty contaminants into the system. So, so that's why we need them in hydraulic systems. In a lubrication system, the fluid level will change with the thermal expansion of the fluid. So the fluid level change won't be as dramatic, but we need to allow for thermal expansion. Okay. Now, if the system is purely a hydraulic system with a motor drive, 
again, there's not going to be much exchange that isn't thermal exchange. But the fluid level will change. So we need to allow for that. And that's where these breathers come in. Now, air isn't as clean as you think it might be. Um, certainly, um, anyone who was in Australia last summer with the bushfires will be aware of how dirty air can be. Um, it was quite alarming, really. We've got some figures here showing how the uh, average dust concentrations are. So, you know, a typical suburban area, you might be three to seven milligrams of dust per cubic meter of air. Um, the dirtiest examples would be in construction industries with tracked vehicles. So this would be, you know, it, it refuse dumps and so on. Or um, the, the dirtiest environment I've ever seen was a scout jamboree. Basically, you need to filter your air. Um, so, yes, that's what the breathers are. I would just like to um, clarify something, though, if you don't mind. Um, at HIDAC, uh, we tend to call these filter breathers. Um, very commonly in the industry, they're known as filler breathers. Now, the, the difference there is a subtle but important one. We are basically saying that these things are designed to breathe and filter air. They are not designed to be a fill point primarily. It's not their primary function. So a filler breather is a point that you could take a cap off and fill the tank. Now, normally that is, of course, the same point. But in a well-designed system, the fill point would be a separate place. The reason for that is that the fill point, if it's through a quick connect coupling, you can filter the oil as you put it in and you are not letting people have access to the tank by opening up a cap and just pouring any crap in. Okay, so this is the breathing point primarily, not the filling point. Choosing the right filter breather. Okay, so it's about a reduction in the contaminant ingress. The rate at which contamination enters the hydraulic system can be considerably reduced by efficient tank breather filtration. Incorrectly sized tank breather filters can place additional strain on the system and reduce the service life of hydraulic filter elements. So it's all about exclusion. Now, as a typical rule of thumb with a hydraulic system, it's going to be 10 times cheaper to exclude a contaminant in the first place than to remove it with a fluid filter. Okay, so that's exactly where these things come in. So these are going to be filtering dusty air keeping the fluid clean so that the fluid filters, which are more expensive because they have to be um, able to handle a dynamic load, then they can do their job without all of that ingress, that which was excluded by the air breather. You should select an air filter that has at least the same filtration rating as the finest system filters in the hydraulic circuit. So, for example, if you have 10 micron filtration, it doesn't make any sense to have 25 micron breathers or even 10 micron breathers okay so generally you want to have a the smallest most in in many systems you know, there's always exceptions but in many systems the most smallest micron rating will often be on the air breather if it's applied correctly generally HIDAC air filter products are three micron paper um, they're um, phenolic resin impregnated cellulose, but they, we call it paper. However, there are some products that have a one micron and a two micron glass fiber option. Okay, and that's for super critical sensitive systems. Um, we would uh, use those sorts of filters. So how we size them up is generally we um, have a look at a, at a factor here. So we have the calculated airflow, which is really what we size it on. And we look at the maximum pump flow in liters a minute, which is defining how much fluid we're pushing into our cylinders. And then we have a factor of that to multiply it out. So generally you could go, okay, we're going to use a filter rated to say two times, but that's for low dust concentration. For in a very clean environment, indoors maybe. So average dust concentration, you'd say between three and six times pump flow is about the flow rate that we're going to say we're going to size our filter on. If it's a dirty environment, we can often go seven to ten times pump flow. Okay, so you can see then it describes on here. These are from our catalogue, um, these guidelines. It's important whether or not we have continuous monitoring of the filter, air filter, and its, um, its cleanliness and its differential pressure. So general rule of thumb, you could say, look, if you had a, 
a flow rate, go five times at general purpose. Okay. So the we've got sizing graphs on, on these things. So there's two different products here, a BF10 and a BF3, a quarter inch BSP thread and a three quarter thread. This is clearly a larger filter. The maximum permitted initial pressure loss of 0 0.05 bar and optionally 0 0.01 bar with a clean filter element and the calculated airflow rate. So, for example, if you had a pump flow of 40 litres a minute, then you multiply that by 5, 200 litres a minute, that's a good place to size your filter. So then if you had 200 litres a minute, you could say, look, um, with this particular filter, we are between 0 .0, 0 0.01 and 0 0.02, it will do, but it should be probably a little bit bigger. Down here, we're well below 0 0.01. Now, at a critical point, this 0 0.05 is the highest that you'd ever want to put it in. But generally, the lower, the better. Okay, so it, it, it pays to have a larger breather. You're replacing it less often. But that's how we size these things. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, now, um, we have some products that have actually indicators in these in these uh, air breathers as well. So it's a little bit unusual. Most of the um, filter breathers that I've seen don't have an indicator, but we're high deck and we do things properly here. So um, when do you change it? Well, for air breathers that do have a clogging indicator, we recommend you change your filter at 0 0.2 pressure drop, since a higher pressure drop could lead to cavitation at the pump. So in this case, that would be when this needle goes to a vertical position from the zero point. Okay, so that's as it's breathing in. So you know if it's going to 0 0.2 bar, it's having a hard time drawing the air in. That's a really good time to fit to replace it. Okay, we have um, other types of filters as well. Um, this this is one that's just going to have, but it's got a spring on it basically, and this tells you when to change it. Now, as I said, most breathers don't have an indicator. So when do you change that? Well, some people just never change it. We don't recommend that. You would put it into your PM schedule, your preventative maintenance, and change it periodically. You don't need to change it every 12 months. I would suggest four years. But in, it entirely depends on the cleanliness of your area, your surroundings, the environments, everything. Okay. Okay, so I've already described that. So we're up to the next point. This is um, really misapplied filter breathers and what can go wrong. So I've entitled this bit, let me remind you how to breathe. Because breathing does come naturally, but some people kind of forget how to do it. So what is important is we need to ensure that the tank is airtight so that the only air exchange possible is through the filter. There's no point having a filter breather that's working correctly if you have holes in your gasket in your tank under your electric motor if it's vertically mounted. If you have any point of where air could get into your tank, it will go there before it goes through a breather because the breather is filtered. So you must ensure all of the air exchange happens through the breather. You must ensure that the air filter is in good condition. So if you have a breather, that's not enough. You need to have a, a breather in a good condition. It's not hard, but you wouldn't believe what's out there. Uh, you need to ensure that the air filter is correctly fitted and you need to ensure that the air filter remains dry. This is a paper element after all, and ensure that there is a pathway for the air to flow. Okay, so more about those uh, shortly in a few slides. But I'd like to point out though that um, this is a common type of cap that I've seen in hydraulic industry. A cap without a seal is useless. So the idea with this is you have a standpipe. This thing goes plonk on the top of the standpipe. There's no seal. That's fine if you're in like 1950, okay? The world has moved on. We must have a seal there. So some people still sell these. If you buy it, you know, okay, you're beyond my help. So um, have a look at the breathers that you're using. This is the most common breather that I've seen. Um, so this is a removable cap. It's sealed by a cork gasket. Okay, these are, these are made to a price. I will suggest that these things very commonly, the steel here will bend and the cork will compress over time. So what it means is these are just light and loose. So a new one will be hard to screw on. If you can grab a filler breather 
or a filter breather and grab it and just move it and it's loose, it is not sealed. It is breathing through that opening. Okay. Very, very common problem. So here we have a filter breather on a tank. This is loaded with dirt. And you can see here then it's in a pretty poor condition. Now, what commonly happens is if you have splashing, then the oil tends to come out where the breather filter is. And then dust will stick to that. And then more oil will come out and make it wet again. And dust will stick to that. And it just is a cycle that goes around and around and around. You can quite simply stop your tank from breathing by loading it up with dirt. Okay, so look out for that. This is a photo um, I, I was sent because this uh, one of our um, customers was pretty amazed by this. So uh, this is a cap loaded with flour. And I said, oh, okay, so um, how was that at breathing? He said, well, it wasn't. Um, and um, it caused the pump to fail. It cavitated. So that is a perfectly good HIDAC filter, but of course the environment's everything. So uh, periodic maintenance is, is important. Th these things have to be allowed to breathe. Okay, so next we've got a video here, a very quick video I'd like to show you. Um, so I'm just going to actually go back to me, just so I can see the video. Okay, so um, this is a video that's going to load up. We'll play it once and then we'll play it a second time. So this particular breather here, this is a Hydeck BF9 breather. Um, what was happening here is the customer found that the contamination level was getting very dirty. And what, what they did was um, had a look upstairs to see what's going on. Somebody else had fitted these filters, these breathers, but they replaced what was originally there. But these breathers here, you'll see that it's been mounted to a flange with a piece of plastic, and the flange just sat in here. Okay, so that's problem number one. It was not pr probably breathing through the filter anyway. Um, problem number two was, of course, when we had a blast of air, um, essentially that just lifted the cap off. And once it was off, of course, it was never going to come back on. So you can see how these things can be lead to a real problem. Okay, it's very important that this tank is breathing clean air, but poor choices have, um, have have stopped that thing from working properly. These, these are some of the best breathers in the market, these ones, but uh, incorrectly fitted, it's pretty useless. Okay, we're moving on to the next slide. Okay, so this is a uh, another little problem. This is an interesting one. So that, that um, breather element I showed you before, the, the one on the left clearly isn't in good condition. Um, what's happened in this particular case is that's been um, basically burnt away by uh, electrostatic discharge in the system. So um, how they uh, found out that they had electrostatic discharge problems was that the fluid cleanliness level suddenly spiked, it got very dirty. And um, they investigated the breathers and just were baffled. They looked at this and said, what? what? <laughs> it shouldn't look like this. So, um, of course, we need to then inspect these things periodically. That's an extreme uh, case of that. This, this one here, I found this interesting. Um, this is a, a gearbox application, and this has a breather that's like a spin-on. You can get spin-on breathers as well. So this particular one had corroded. So um, you can see the dents here in the top of the filter. Um, that's because I actually pressed it, and it's just, there's almost no metal left there anymore. It's just soft. Um, I, we initially thought that these holes were caused by somebody just ramming a screwdriver through the top, but um, no, it had um, simply corroded away at that point, and that, that when we started playing with it and poking it. But um, again, these things should be part of your preventative maintenance, otherwise they don't work as intended. Okay, we've got another uh, quick video here. We have in this little video uh, a breather, the base of a, a, a breather, it doesn't have an element in it, but the tank is being agitated and uh, it's, it's there to demonstrate uh, and assess whether or not these the, the splash-free uh, design is working. So it's, an, it's a splash that's been induced in the tank and you can see here then that this movement is causing a splash to occur. So if you had a paper element in there, that's gonna be saturated very quickly. So if you do have a tank that moves or you're in a vehicle, for example, 
you'd like, you should be considering an anti-splash mechanism, and that's just a simple modification of the part number with an anti-splash guard in there. And they work 100% and allow the breather to do their job. So that little anti-splash device is shown here, um, and you can see what happens here. Basically, it's uh, allowing the air and the fluid to separate. Okay, so that's an anti-splash device. Another way of doing the same thing is you can put your filter breather on a standpipe. So that lifts it up and stops splashing on mobile equipment as well. So there's, there's two options. You may choose one or the other or both. Okay. So splashing is bad because we saturate the element and being a paper, it doesn't breathe very well anymore. So that's what can go wrong with breathers and how to fix them. Okay, got two more things to talk about. Um, desiccant breathers. So these are uh, one of the more interesting breathers in our little portfolio. Um, so these filters here, we have an air filter, two micron, and there's two separate levels here of a desiccant gel. And what's interesting about these, if you don't mind, I will just simply go back to my presentation again and I'll stop sharing back to here because I've got one of these here. Okay, so this this is a, a desiccant breather. Um, now, uh, essentially, the granules in here, uh, like the desiccant, the silica gel that you get sometimes in food packages and things, so, you know, you buy tortillas or something, it's going to keep them dry, stop them molding. So we are going to be then breathing through here, and that's going to be drying the air. And then if air does go into the tank when the system's turned off, then uh, as the system cools, it's not going to be co um, condensating because... Um, we're going to be drying the air. So this is filtering and drying, okay? So this one's in a pretty poor condition. It's been messed up a bit. I, I use this as maracas when I'm doing training. Where the baby? Okay, moving on. So this this is also um, my Darth Vader moment because um, this, this has check valves for breathing in and for breathing out. So if I breathe in, don't like doing this, but I'll do it. Okay, so at least I know the air's dry, but the, the little check valves in there have um, basically not allowed any air exchange until it's necessary. And then it also has other valves that um, work on the outward uh, exhaust. <laughs> Delightful. But that's quite important because... I'm going to go back to my presentation. It's quite important because... Um, the way these things work, quite important to us because as we are breathing in, the air goes in through these little valves and then uh, air is passed through the desiccant and there's uh, two different layers. There's a desiccant gel and then there's, there's what's called a molecular sieve and then there's simply a sponge material on the top. It passes through a two micron element on the top and then the air goes back down into the tank down through the bottom. So when we're breathing in, we're breathing dried air, and that keeps our air, the air above the reservoir, dry. Breathing out with this particular BDE design, it actually bypasses the desiccant gel. That's what that noise was. So uh, it bypasses that so that the desiccant gel only works in one direction, and you don't get an oil mist through the desiccant gel, and it extends the life of the desiccant gel. So these are fantastic and the most effective um, desiccant breathers on the market if you want to uh, keep um, condensation from occurring in your system. Um, when do you replace these ones? Well, they will change color. So they start off as a dark color like this one, and then they'll uh, end up being a very clear orange. So, and it tells you when to, when to replace the thing. Okay, so that's desiccant breathers. One last thing to talk about is a pressurized breather, and I've got one of them here as well. So a pressurized filter breather uh, provides additional protection from moisture, which can condense in the reservoir, causing oil degradation and corrosion. It provides a positive pressure to the pump suction, eliminating cavitation, and it increases the breather's own life as it will breathe less. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to me for a moment again, and I'm going to stop screen sharing again. I've got one of these here. So this is our little pressurized breather. So um, the thing about this is I can breathe in very easily. 
but I can't breathe out. Okay, and the reason I can't breathe out is because this has um, essentially a little spring-loaded poppet in there, 35 kilopascals or 0.35 bar, and that leads to a pressure within the tank. So then as the system cools or the fluid cools, then you aren't exchanging air and it basically will increase your cleanliness. So pressurized breathers are used very commonly in construction equipment because um, you're in a very dirty environment when you're doing all the digging. So what these things are going to do is stop the exchange of air um, between the environment and the tank so that you can extend the life of the breather. It just makes it a better system. Also, it, as, I, as I said there, it stops capitation. Now, this isn't an indicator on the top. It's actually a pressure release valve. So before you do any maintenance on the tank, because the tank's pressurized, you need to be able to eliminate the pressure from the tank. So I'll blow in here and then open the little relief gadget on the top and you'll see. Okay, so that's that's a pressurized breather and how they work. So, um, yep, yeah, back to the presentation. That's the pressurized breather. So um, really, that's almost the end of this. Just a moment. It's important to get the right screen. They also provide an anti-splash function as well because if you aren't pushing air out, you can't splash. Okay, so they're a, they're a, a very handy thing. Oh, and I should say, by the way, the fact that these are a pressurized tank, that's why this is aluminium. So um, basically, you have the mechanical strength of the aluminium rather than a plastic thread, and the entire thing is going to be under pressure as well. So it's an aluminium breather. Okay, so um, that rounds out the um, the products that are that are available. There's quite a, a big range of filter breathers in HIDAC, but they are a very important breather, some of the most important part of the system. So, um, you know, it, it does sound a little stupid. Everyone knows how to breathe. It, it's the most natural thing in the world. But we have to remember that breathing is important. If it's important for you, it's also important for your system. So um, if it extends your life, it'll extend the life of the system as well. And of course, we know that if we are going to be breathing rubbish, then we're not doing ourselves any favours. All right, so it's nearly question time. I'd just like to highlight that um, we've got uh, two more to go in our little series. The next episode on this one is um, filter media selection. So the last two webinars are on how we choose the media for the filter and then how we use that then to apply it in a filter to come up with a solution. Okay. We're up to the poll here. So the question was, have you seen a system where the system cleanliness level has been compromised by an improperly fitted filter breather? I will say yes, because I have. And 75% say yes. The other 21% say no. So um, duke it out amongst yourselves, people. Um, this will be um, uploaded to YouTube, and you can do what everyone else does. Is you can just fight over the comment section at the bottom when it's all done. But I would suggest um, having a filter element on your breather that isn't fitted properly or having a tank that's breathing rather than the filter breather, yes, it will definitely affect your system in a bad way. So, okay, don't forget to breathe. Don't forget to wear your masks. Stay safe, wash your hands, and we will see you on the next webinar, which is episode 10. And thank you very much for your time.